my name is Tim and I'm the youth and schools worker from Bethel Baptist Church right here in Whitchurch and let's talk about Christmas. There is something in the air and it could be the smell of roasted chestnuts, pine trees, orange and cinnamon, hot chocolates, pudding steaming, turkey roasting, not just that, all the lights going up as well, and the carol singing, and the cards, and the gifts, and the Christmas plays. Oh, and um, don't forget about sprouts. We can't forget about them, can we? It's like Marmite. You either love them or you hate them. Do you like sprouts? Personally, I can't stand them. But I do know some people that would happily eat an entire plate of sprouts. It is, of course, Christmas time. A time for gifts, presents, and time with family and friends. But what else is Christmas all about? Decorations, of course! Have you put your Christmas decorations up? What's your favourite bit? Is it the tree? Is it the lights? Is it the hanging bits? I've put my Christmas tree up, and the hanging decorations are going up later on. And I've just found this nativity scene in the Christmas box. Do you have one of these at home? Or maybe in your classroom? A nativity scene is a great little diorama that can remind us of the greatest moment in history, the moment that God came to earth as a baby. The whole Christmas story is captured in this little scene. And you can read it too in the Bible if you turn to Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 20 or Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38 and then it continues in chapter 2 verses 1 to to 20. That's a lot to remember, so I'll put it in the description down below. You see, it all started in a little town called Nazareth, where this little girl lived, and I've got her in here, and her name was Mary. Now, the standout thing about Mary is that she loved God, and she liked to talk to God, also known as prayer. And one day, however, something happened that would change her life. Well, actually, it changed the world forever. So Mary was doing what Mary does when an angel, God, yeah, uh, not just any angel actually, the archangel Gabriel came to see her and give her a very important message. Now, if you know anything about angels, you will know that when they turn up, pretty much the first thing they say is, do not be afraid. This is good advice as it goes. So after proclaiming no fear, Gabriel says, Mary, you will have a special baby and he will be God's gift to the world. And Mary answered, but I have no husband. How can this happen? And then Gabriel said, your baby will be the son of God. He will save the people from their sins and bring the world back to God again. And Mary said, the mother of the son of God, I will be. Let it happen as you say. I love God and I will obey. Now that's not all that is happening in Nazareth on this night. In another place in the town, there was a man and he was called Joseph and he was engaged to be married to Mary. What's Christmas without a bit of love, eh? Ah. Oh. So the angel came to see Joseph too, calling him by name and he said, Joseph, Mary will have a baby and he will be the son of God, a little boy. His name must be Jesus, and he will bring you so much joy. God knows you love Mary, so make her your wife and be a good father to Jesus all your life. There were lots of things that happened next. Mary went to see her cousin who was pregnant also, and there was this whole part of the story with Elizabeth and Zechariah about God's faithfulness, but I don't think I have enough characters with me today. Anyway, Joseph and Mary are making preparations for the baby Jesus to be born. There was so much to be done. Baby showers, gift lists from mamas and papas, push chair, car seat, baby food, pouches. Actually, there was none of that going on. There wasn't enough time. Right when it was time for the baby to be born, a census was called where the people uh, in power want to know how many people live in their land and how many taxes they should be getting. And everyone needed to travel back home to their towns and register there. Joseph needed to take Mary to his hometown of Bethlehem. And this was a long journey and Mary being so pregnant and unable to walk very far needed some form of transport. An e-scooter? A hoverboard? A taxi? An ambulance? A jet ski? Maybe an airplane? Nope. 
these guys travelled the road from Nazareth to Bethlehem on a donkey. Not to say this is a bad thing, but I mean, it's not ideal, is it? So the little donkey carried Mary on a dusty road. I promise I won't sing it. And they made their way to Bethlehem. All good, yes? Well, not so much. And when they arrived at Bethlehem, they found a place that was really, really busy. So busy, in fact, that everywhere they tried to stay was already full. No room at the Hilton, the Premier Inn, the Holiday Inn, the Celtic Manor, Village Hotel, the Angel Hotel, no room anywhere. Exhausted and clutching at straws, Mary and Joseph try one last inn. Now the innkeeper took pity on them. Not having any room indoors available, they gave them a place in the stable. Again, not ideal, but it offered some shelter and the animals kept the place warm. The baby was coming now, so they quickly set up home and there in the lowly stable, with the animals looking on, the baby Jesus was born. Meanwhile, outside the city, in a field on a hillside, some shepherds were watching their sheep and washing their socks. I promise not to sing that one either. So they were minding their own business and suddenly, boom, the night sky goes from dark with a smattering of stars to bright white light. Like that moment when your mum and dad come into your bedroom in the morning and put on the lights and it's so bright you have to huddle back under the covers. Angels filled the night sky with their dazzling light. I haven't got enough angels here, I've only got this one. Just like you or I would be in this situation, the shepherds were absolutely terrified. Now when angels turn up in the Bible, like I said, they always say, do not be afraid. This tells us that they must be fantastic and terrifying to look at at the same time. Now, once the shepherds had calmed a little, the angels told them to go and find the baby that was born this night, and he will bring the world goodness and light. They sang as well, and the sound of their singing filled the hill hillsides. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to all men. That is what God wants to bring. And when the angels finished, the shepherds made their way down from the hillside as quickly as they could. Wouldn't you, if you had just been given this good a news? They quickly found the right stable. I mean, there can't have been many with a newborn in them. The shepherds turning up must have been quite the sight for Mary and Joseph. These were people who spent their life out in the open, travelling with their sheep to different places. And suddenly they were here, strangers in their midst. Not only was it strange that they were there, but they bowed down and worshipped the baby Jesus. They told Mary and Joseph all about what they had seen on that hillside. They were so excited by everything that had happened, they couldn't help themselves and spoke to everyone in the town. They shared about what the angels had said. Goodwill and peace to all men is what God wants for us. And today in this town, God's son has been born. Amazing, hey? That they were there at the start and worshipped and celebrated the coming of the newborn king. I think there are some people missing from the nativity scene. Um, we have Mary and Joseph, we have the donkey, we have baby Jesus, the animals and the shepherds. Who else? Oh, there they are in the big box over there. Meanwhile, in a far off land, some amazingly wise and learned men were looking at the sky and saw a new star. Consulting all their scriptures, prophecies and documents, they realised that this star was significant. It told them the future king of everything had been born and that they should follow the star to where it pointed here on earth. They packed up their things and they got all their gifts together and travelled all the way to the far off land. They first stopped at Jerusalem, the big city in the area and spoke to the king there, a sus guy by the name of Herod, and asked him of the whereabouts of the baby who would be a king. King Herod, however, is a devious guy. Even the thought of a baby king made him worried for his own life and rule. He devised a plan, and he sent them, the wise men, on to Bethlehem, as the prophecies had said, in the hope that they would confirm his suspicions, 
and he said he wanted to worship the new king also, but he really wanted to kill the baby. Eesh. Doesn't sound very friendly, does it? So with Herod's blessing on them, they went and followed the star to Bethlehem, then the right street, and then it settled over the house where Mary and Joseph, and what was more likely to be the toddler Jesus, lived. As soon as they saw him, they bowed down and worshipped this child. They had travelled so far to see him. They didn't just say words of worship either. They worshipped Jesus with gifts of gold. Always helpful when starting life with a newborn, but this was given because he was a king. The king they had been promised. Next up was myrrh. A strange gift, this one. It's normally used in an anointing or embalming oil for when you die. Now, they hadn't ordered the wrong gift from Amazon. It was to show that even though Jesus is the son of God, he was still man and that he would die for our sins. Awesome. Last and smelliest of all is frankincense. This was a fragrant offering, an incense that would be burnt and give off a beautiful aroma and one that was offered to God often. This was the way these wise people acknowledged and showed that Jesus was the son of God. Handy tip to know is that there were probably more than three people who offered gifts, but as a tradition, three are spoken about, as I think I'd run out of space in my nativity set, don't you? So after these guys visited baby Jesus, they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, but to skedaddle out of there as soon as possible, taking the long way home, which they did. And when Herod found out, he was so furiously angry, he ordered all the young boys in the town to be killed. Not cool, Herod. All of this was okay, though. Joseph was warned about this by the angel, and he, Mary, and Jesus managed to escape to Egypt and be safe. But more about Jesus' life another time. So as you can see, my nativity is made. I have all the things that remind me of that first Christmas all the ways that God shaped this perfect moment. That's what's awesome about Christmas. Not just the presents under the tree, the sparkling lights, Christmas dinners and time with the family, whilst these are precious things and make you happy. What I like most about is the reminder that God kept his promise by sending his son to live among us, teach, heal and save us. So we should remember that Christmas is about so much more than just the presents under the tree and Santa and his reindeers and eating till we are full. It's about Jesus and God taking care of us and making sure that we have the chance to be saved. It's the greatest gift we could receive at Christmas. Don't you want that gift too? So I'm going to finish this up with a bit of prayer. Now, you don't have to pray as well. Uh, but if people around you are praying, please respect them. So we're going to bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for Christmas. Th thank you that we can celebrate and have joy with our family and friends. Thank you for all the food and presents we get and how blessed we are. Thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus to save us. Help us to remember and share your love this Christmas time. Amen. Awesome. Well, that is me nearly set up for Christmas now. Just a few more decorations to put up, maybe bake some mince pies and sing a few carols and watch some Christmas films with my family. Merry Christmas, everyone. And I hope to see you all again soon in the new year. Bye bye.